In this video, we're going to onboard our identity services. And I originally tried to do this using the OVA. However, no matter what I tried, I could not get it to work. So we need to take the long way around, which means we're going to end up using an ISO image. And this VM is going to be a little bit different from any of the other VMs that we've configured. We're going to look at why. So from the machine, the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and get into PVE1. I'm going to go down to my file storage and I want to upload my ISO. So we're going to load the ISO and that's sitting on my downloads folder. So here it is, the ICE ISO. And we'll upload that. All right, it's downloaded or uploaded the file. So let's go ahead and just double check, make sure it's there. And it is. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a virtual machine. Now the virtual machine is going to end up being assigned a name and I'm going to call it ICE1. And I have advanced checked because again, this is going to be a little bit different than any other VM that we built thus far. So I'm going to go ahead and select next. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to, in the OS, I'm going to pick the ISO image that we just uploaded. And again, there's going to be pretty much nothing else that needs to be done here. So I'm going to jump over to system. Now, from system, I'm actually going to change the SCSI controller from VertIO SCSI single to just standard VertIO SCSI. I'm not going to check the QMU agent. I'm going to go ahead and select next. And what that's going to do is that's going to place us for the configuration of our disks. Now, this machine is not going to use SCSI. I'm going to use VertIO block as far as the format. And it's going to be a 300 gig drive. And we'll go ahead and take, take all of the defaults in the advanced configs. Now, we now have more options as it relates to our CPUs. I'm going to go with two sockets and eight cores each to give me 16 virtual CPUs. And I'm going to change my CPU units from 100 to 1024. And I'm going to go ahead and leave all of the extra flags set as is and hit next. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and include my RAM, which is going to be 32768 for 32 gigs of RAM. And again, you could get away with 16, at which time it would be 16384. I'm going to go ahead and select next. And the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to place this inside of the shared services bridge that I have set up in the environment. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select next and finish. Now, don't turn the machine on at this time. Because what we have to do is we now have to go in and, and adjust the SM BIOS. The thing to keep in mind is, is that in the context of Proxmox, these deployments are going to end up being KVM based. Now, we're using an ISO image, we're building the environment up. So in order to, to allow the installation media to recognize the platform, we have to set it up as a vendor state of KVM. Now, I think that's what's happening when I try to migrate the VMDK image over. That's not actually taking place based on the fact that I'm trying to use the OVF to build the virtual machine for me. So what I'm going to do at this particular juncture is I want to go ahead and go back into the device. I'm not going to start it. I'm going to go to hardware and I just want to double check 32 gigs of RAM, 16 virtual CPUs, CBIOS is what's being used. The default state, VertIO, SCSI is my standard. I see the drive that I'm pointing to. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to Options, and I'm going to go to my SM BIOS type, and I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to go down to Product, and I'm just going to type KVM. Now, that, again, is going to basically allow this resource to work as though it was being installed in KVM or Hyper-V. So let's go ahead now and select Start. And then I'm going to go to console. And if all goes well, we should get a boot menu. So this is the virtual CD that I've set up. So I'm going to select one for ICE installation using keyboard and monitor. I'm going to hit enter. 
and it's going to go through the installation. And if everything works exactly the way that I need it to work, it should complete the installation. Now, this process is going to take a long amount of time. We're looking at probably 30 minutes. So rather than sit here and monitor it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take myself off the camera. I'm going to record the screen and then I'll just fast forward through this entire process when it presents us with the setup options, provided something doesn't happen between now and then. For clarity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and go to full screen. At this time, it is ready for us to config. So all we're going to do is we're going to type in setup to trigger the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and assign it a host name of ICE. We'll say ICE1. Enter the IP address will be 10.1.255.12. 255, 255, 255.0. The Gateway of Last Resort will be 101255.1. I'm not going to configure IPv6. Domain name will be SD geeks dot local you can use whatever domain name you want to use 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 will be the name server i don't want to worry about a secondary we'll do time.nist.gov and um we're not going to have a second it's going to be eastern standard time for me i do need to enable ssh or else the integration will not work between the dnac and the identity services engine and we'll go ahead and take the default username of admin, and we'll use a password 1234QWER. 1234QWER. We'll hit enter. And now it should go through and handle the rest of the configuration. Now, keep in mind, this device only has one Ethernet port on it. If you wanted to install more, obviously you could. If you wanted to have it connected to your internal network uh, obviously you could right now i'm relying on that bios router to allow me to get all of my resources set up in 10.1.255.0 slash 24 at least initially and still have internet access and reachability so we're going to end up having to wait for this to complete and again this is going to take a long amount of time i'll record it and i will fast forward through it in post All right, at this point, we are good to go with regard to access. Let's go ahead and log in as admin. One, two, three, four, QWER. And the next thing I want to do is I just want to validate whether or not the services are all running. And I'm going to do that by show, application, status, ICE. Wait for the response. So application server is still initializing. This needs to be running before we can connect to the identity services engine. So I'm going to give it some additional time. And we want to see if we can't access that destination. So blow this back up again. Forgot to click on it before I hit enter. So one, two, three, four, Q, W, E, R. Let's make it full size. So I'm going to stay signed in. And we've got a couple of things going on. So right now we have downloaded the operating system for 2377. I'm going to go ahead and start that install, which is again going to run in the background and take a long time. And the next thing I also want to do is I'm now going to navigate to HTTPS. 10.1.255.12, which is the IP address of my ICE. I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to accept the risk. 
And let's log in. So admin, one, two, three, four, QWER. And if all goes well, we should be able to access the dashboard. Go ahead and just bypass all of this. I'll provide that later. We're using a 90 day license for testing. And sure enough, everything is exactly the way I want it to be. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to stop right here. And then we are going to end up going ahead and looking at the concept of how we're going to be handling our virtualization environment. I have gone ahead and decided that I am going to begin this process using EVENG Community Edition. So I'm trying to keep this lab as affordable as humanly possible. So obviously, if you want to run Pro like I do, or you want to run CML2 like I am starting to do, you know, those choices are options. But right now, my primary focus is going to be on setting up and installing EVENG Community Edition inside of this lab. Now, we're also looking at a couple of other options. So as an example, if we wanted, we could run the vManage, the vBonds, and the vSmart outside of say, for instance, even G or CML2. We could continue to build this lab out the way we want. In fact, the possibility even exists to not even have a requirement for running even G. We can run virtual 8KVs. We can run the virtual uh, 9K images. They would probably end up being a little bit more problematic for us. But I'm going to go ahead and stick to my original plan, and that is, is to run everything inside of Eve. Now, Eve community does not have Docker containers. I run Docker containers in my classes and in the core class video series, I obviously am leveraging Docker containers, but there's just a lot of stuff that I want to get the opportunity to show you guys with regard to how you can emulate these Cisco devices for the purposes of facilitating your CCIE enterprise infrastructure studies as it relates to all topic domains, automation, software-defined functionality, as well as just standard routing and switching. And using EVENG or CML2 is probably going to end up being the fastest and easiest way to accomplish that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and we'll pick up with adding our EVE Community Edition installation in the next video. I'll see you guys there.